Helton buys back out there. Open Caulfield shoots and scores. Oh, he makes it look so easy. In the past 20 years, the NHL has seen a massive shift when it comes to drafting American talent. In fact, in the 90s and early 2000s, it wouldn't even be surprising if not a single player from the NCAA was even drafted. Yet, in recent drafts, there have been up to 23 players selected in a single year. 23 is much bigger than zero, I, I think. And with that, the NCAA has seen a massive wave of talented players, if not literal generational talent which in turn has created some of the most fierce Hobie Baker competitions in league history. And if you're not too familiar what exactly the Hobie Baker Award is, it's a very prestigious award given to the top college player in the country. So, you know, think of it kind of like an MVP award. And as it stands, the 2021 Hobie Baker Award winner will be announced soon, with players like Cole Caulfield setting the league on fire. And make sure to press that subscribe button for some more awesome hockey content. We are getting so, so close to 50,000 subscribers, which is just mind blowing. And you would really make my day by helping me get there. We will start in 2012 with Jack Connolly, as he would put up 60 points in 41 games, barely edging out the likes of Tory Krug and Justin Schultz. However, after completely dominating the nation, Alongside of edging out multiple future stars in the NHL, Jack Connolly would pack his bags and leave to Sweden, as he would never play a single professional game in North America, and he has spent nearly 10 years in the SHL. Definitely an interesting comparison when you consider that players literally had sweepstakes, and Jack Connolly was kind of like, meh, peace out. In 2013, we had Drew LeBlanc, who edged out other names such as Johnny Goudreau and Eric Halla. And again, after spending five years in college hockey, LeBlanc would actually make the NHL for two games. He played two subpar seasons in the minors, and just like Connolly, LeBlanc would pack his bags and head overseas, as Drew would go from the top player in the nation to playing his entire career in Germany. Crazy. In 2014, we had Johnny Goudreau, who would really start to change public perception in this season as he would put up the highest point total on this list with 80 points in 40 games, easily blowing up the doors of his competition, including the names of Shane Gossespierre and Kevin Hayes. And in a more surprising fashion, at least I was surprised, Goudreau would stick with his team and sign with the Calgary Flames. You take that New York Rangers, where Johnny Hockey has been one of the top wingers in the league ever since, putting up 99 points in 2019 which is definitely a stark comparison versus the two previous winners as they literally just pieced out from North America, whereas Goudreau would literally become that all-star overnight. In 2015, Jack Eichel would come in and clean up with 71 points in his draft year. The NCAA is a pretty low-scoring league with many of the Hopi Baker Award winners being, you know, 20, 21-year-olds. So for an 18 slash 19-year-old to walk in, and put up 71 points, that's crazy. As Jack Eichel would steamroll Zach Heinemann and Jimmy Vesey as they didn't even come close in 2015. On top of Eichel pretty much winning every collegiate award possible, which includes the NCAA championship. However, with that being said, this incredible resume was still secondhand to McDavid, which goes to show how good McDavid is when you consider that Eichel had a pretty much perfect draft year and Eichel would remain that consensus second overall pick, and of course would be drafted second overall to the Sabres in that same season. Where Eichel would take a couple years to get it fully figured out, but it is safe to say that Eichel today is a legitimate superstar. A franchise piece, 78 points in 68 games last season, who unfortunately has fallen victim to the Buffalo Sabres as of recent. The dying, and I mean dying seconds of the So, with that being said, do you think Eichel, after six years of failure, will find a new team through a trade? Comment down below, because Eichel is one of those players who could be, you know, top 10 in the league if he had a better system around him. In 2016, Jimmy VC would go, nah, -uh, Kyle Connor in your 71 points. Get out of here, Brock Besser, in your record setting rookie season. I deserve this. Which I mean, VC was a great player, but this race was a little sus. And what's fascinating about VC? It's the fact that this man was drafted in 2012 by the Predators, but would decide to opt for free agency, which only would erupt the entire league. 
In fact, it wasn't just free agency, it was literally coined the Jimmy VC sweepstakes, as it would become an international spectacle as every team in the NHL was desperately trying to recruit the potential phenom. You know that How Much Your Mother episode where Barney is getting recruited by all the strip clubs? Basically getting offered everything the team has to offer? Well, that is exactly how I imagined this scenario. Psst, psst. Hey Jimbo, you know this guy McDavid? Now, there's, there's a reason why he's called McJesus. Join the squad and let him enlighten you. Are you French? No? Okay, goodbye. But like every other college free agent in probably NHL history, BC would follow in line and sign with the Rangers. And well, Jimmy VC would go from one of the most hyped up college prospects in NHL history, expected to walk in and be that impact player, and he would completely flop. 27 points in his first season, 28 the next year, and a hilarious little tidbit about this whole situation is the fact that Buffalo traded for his rights back in 2016, so before the sweepstakes. However, he would reject them and obviously go with the Rangers, but after turning down the Sabres, two years later, Buffalo would acquire him for another pick anyways. So I mean, they got him, but again, he was a total flop. In this season, Toronto would pick him up for a depth role, where he would be sent down to the minors and picked up on waivers by the Canucks. VC went from the hottest free agent who literally had his own sweepstakes to being given away on waivers. And it's honestly so fascinating that a player like Jack Eichel or Kale McCarr can be spoken about in the same regard, but when it comes to transitioning into the NHL, it's not even a comparison. Now with that being said, VC is still a valuable depth guy that by no means is a bust, rather just a massive disappointment in the context of his expectations. 2017, Will Butcher would edge out other notable names such as Clayton Keller and Alex Kerfoot, as he would put up an impressive 37 points in 43 games, matting the back end of the University of Denver, on top of leading the charge to an NCAA championship. And what's confusing about this entire situation is the fact that Will Butcher would also decline to sign with his drafted team, which was the Colorado Avalanche. However, Alex Kerfoot would be drafted by the Devils and would also opt for free agency. But here's the kicker. Both of them would become top collegiate players in the world in the same year, but they would both virtually swap teams. As Butcher would be drafted by the Avs but signed with the Devils, and Alex Kerfoot would be drafted by the Devils but signed with the Avs. Just a little confusing and I guess <laughs> interesting fact. And Will Witcher would walk in in his rookie season and put up a very respectable 44 points. Except, everything was basically downhill from here. As Will Butcher has been seeing some pretty significant regression in both ends of the ice since his rookie season. In 2020, he had pretty brutal analytics and has been in and out of the lineup this season. So, I guess we'll see how things turn around when the Devils start getting their stuff together. In 2018, we had the hockey god himself, Adam Gaudet, as he would lead the league in scoring with 60 points in 38 games, competing against other notable names such as Ryan Donato and Florida's Henrik Borgstrom. And so far, after three years in the league, I've been struggling to understand what player Gaudet exactly is. He clearly has skill, he needs some more polish, shows flashes of stardom, yet is very inconsistent and has been heavily struggling this season, specifically with a career low 7 points in 32 games. So the verdict is still out on Gaudet, but he's definitely been a nice bottom 6 option for Vancouver who still has some good potential. In 2019, we had Kyle McCarr, putting up an incredible 49 points, edging out both Adam Fox and Quinn Hughes who also had fantastic seasons. And well, McCarr's story is pretty simple, in fact, the same day McCarr won the Hobie Baker was the same day he would get called up to the NHL during the playoffs. And the rest is history. 50 points in 57 games from the blue line as a rookie, which would earn him a Calder Trophy. In this season, well, I mean outside of some injuries, McCarr has been proving that not only is he a star, but we're talking future multi-time Norris winner and or Hart winner. To put it simply, the guy is just, just nasty, I don't, I, I don't know what to say. 
and will be hands down the face of the NHL for the next decade. And what's so fascinating about the Hobie Baker Award or just the NCAA in general? Adam Gaudet, the year before McCarr wins, is still heavily struggling at the NHL level. Jimmy VC, the man who had his own sweepstakes, was sent down and claimed on waivers. Yet, someone like Kale McCarr can walk in and take over the entire league. Which is just a great example of the chaotic development curve of a prospect. And why we should maybe hold back on announcing a sweepstakes for a player who hasn't stepped a foot yet in the NHL. So, what do you guys think? With more resources being allocated to the NCAA, on top of more and more Canadians choosing to play Junior A, bypassing the CHL to play college hockey, is it possible that the NCAA eventually takes over as the premier league for prospects? I mean, the NFL and NBA exclusively draft from college. So, if anything, it's an interesting discussion. And just a little update from my end, guys. As I mentioned before, I just recently bought my first home. Thank you to everyone who sent me some congratulations or just comments down below. But with that, the move and my school and work has been just chaos. So I do apologize to the RTH fans expecting videos a bit more often, but it's okay because I am starting to finally get back in the groove. In fact, I'm always curious to see who's still here. So if you are still watching this video, y yes you, comment down below, Zach Bogosian. We'll see who the real ones are and probably confuse everyone else.